Hello. In this video, I'm going to talk about uh, synthesis using Diels Alder reactions. And in particular, what I want to do is uh, talk about or show you some structures of products that have been made by Diels Alder reactions and walk you through a process to identify the diene and the dienophile. And I'm hoping that this process is going to work almost all of the time. And so uh, first thing that you want to do, um, oh, I'm going to work through about five examples, and they're, they're complex-looking examples on purpose. Uh, the diels alder reaction is a reaction where you can pretty quickly take simple-looking compounds and react them to make complicated-looking compounds. And so I want to do my uh, worked examples on some complicated-looking compounds so that you can recognize that it's actually pretty easy to, to uh, figure out where these came from. All right, uh, so in my first example, I've got this bridged bicyclic molecule that I've decided, to, uh, like I have in all of my videos, to represent it by the side-on view and the, the top-down view. And um, it's got two nitrile functional groups on it, uh, and they're trans to each other, so that should, that should help us out. Uh, the first thing that we want to do is identify the alkene that came from the... the diene. And the mechanism of the diene, or the mechanism of the reaction, one of the pi bonds in the diene stays there, no longer uh, on the outsides, but in the center of the system. And so in fact, then we can use that, and I'm highlighting it in red here, to identify the four carbon atoms that came from the diene originally. And then those carbon atom and then so those four carbon atoms came from the diene the other two carbon atoms in the ring had to have come from the dienophile and so i'm going to draw a dotted line down here through the ring uh showing where the diene and the dienophile are the to mark off the diene on the left and the dienophile on the right in this case and you notice that my dotted line leaves the bridgehead carbon on the left with the diene. Only in the, this deals all the reaction forms six membered rings. It doesn't form five or seven or other numbered rings. And so only the two other carbons on the right side of this dotted line come from the diene. Everything else on the left has to, or, I'm sorry. Only this, the stuff on the right of the line comes from the dienophile. Everything else on the left has to come from the diene. And then all that matters, all that you want to do is kind of redraw what you see. So on the left, I've got this five-membered ring. And then it's going to continue to show up red, I guess. Uh, but instead of having the diene... You know, instead of having the alkene here in the center, remember that it started off as a diene. And so we want to put alkenes at the positions flanking that place, that center place where the, 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 the remaining alkene was. And then everything on the right becomes the dienophile. And that dienophile has nitrile groups on it, and they are trans to each other. So... Because the diels alder reaction is stereospecific, I want to make my dienophile trans well. Uh, like that this is sort of a mixture of black and red, so please excuse me. There we go. So this molecule here at the top can be made from 1,3-cyclopentadiene. And this nitrile, dinitrile, trans dienophile. Okay. Uh, here is my next one. And you might be looking at this one and be like, oh, Dr. Norris, what are you doing? Um, same approach is going to apply here, though. What we're going to do is identify the alkene that came from the diene. We're going to... then use that to identify the four carbons that came from the diene. And you might have 
wanted to, to, you might have thought about something over here in the five-membered ring on the left, but remember the diels alder reaction makes six-membered rings. There's only one six-membered ring in the structure, so it has to be making that. And then we can draw in the dotted line that separates the diene and the dienophile. And now we can use that information to draw the diene and the dienophile. So first thing we're gonna do is draw everything that's on the left of that line, the way that it is. And instead of drawing the double bond in the middle of the diene, we draw two double bonds on the outside. And then we're gonna draw everything that we see on the right of the diene, we're gonna, or right of that dotted line, and we're gonna draw it the way that it appears. And this becomes the dienophile. Uh, and you'll note that I didn't address the stereochemistry here, but because uh, we have a cyclic dienophile, that leads to this trans arrangement naturally. All right, number three. Uh, by this point, you might be recognizing my approach. Let's uh, let's highlight the bonds. So these are the four atoms that come from the diene, and I've rotated the molecule a little bit, maybe trip you up. And then this dotted line represents where the the dienophile is. Now you might be looking at this uh, structure and be curious there as I'm drawing in, I'm going to draw in the, the diene. Again, draw everything on one side of that line and fill in the diene uh, appropriately and then draw everything on the other side of that line of this, this alcohol. Now you might be um, suspicious that this alcohol is not actually a very good dienophile. Remember, dienophiles uh, are things that, that have electron drawing groups on it. And so, in fact, the actual diene dienophile pair may have not been, uh, the dienophile might not have been the alcohol, it might have been this aldehyde originally, and then the aldehyde was reduced to the alcohol later on. Okay, now I'm gonna give you uh, an example where we have two six-membered rings in the structure, um, but we still make six-membered rings in the diels alder reaction and that we can still identify the uh, carbon atoms that came from the diene the same way We look for the four carbon atoms that surround that double bond. And then we draw our dotted line through the other two other on the other through the other part of the ring. Now we need to be very, very careful here that we don't draw this dotted line extending through other parts on the other side of the molecule because the diels alder reaction only builds this cyclohexene ring, whatever these bonds are over here, they did not come from the diels alder reaction. So we're gonna be very careful in drawing the structure of the diene reactant. And, and the dienophile as well, but you might already have been suspicious uh, that the diene and the dienophile in this case are come from the same molecule and this is this is perfectly allowed this is an example of an intramolecular diels alder reaction where the diene and the dienophile are in the same molecule all right now here's my final one my final one has all kinds of rings on it and even though I've got some other six-membered rings here that have lots of double bonds in them, ignore these aromatic rings. They are not made by Diels-Alder reactions. 
So we are down to looking at this. ring down here on the bottom, and it has two double bonds in it. And so you could actually choose either part of it to be the diene or the dienophile. I'm going to perhaps uh, actually walk through both. Maybe is an interesting, uh, interesting discussion to just look through both, because sometimes you might have both possibilities. So we'll talk about that. And then I, I will let you know which one it probably actually was. So uh, we could talk about the example or, or the version where we have uh, these two bonds that I just drew a line through being formed in the deals all direction, or we could have the other two other side of the cyclohexene ring being formed. Uh, in either case, Part of our reaction is going to look, or one of our reactions is going to look like this big tricyclic thing, ketone. And in the first case, um, this is our dienophile, and it already has an alkene in it, which should be a signal that we actually have an alkyne dienophile. And this this should look a little bit strained to you. I am I'm okay. Uh, with you interpreting that as having uh, some angle strain in it, because it does. If, in fact, I actually like, want to change the way that's represented a little bit to hide some of that angle strain. And so, again, just take everything, the two carbon piece, and draw everything that's here and fill in the extra the double bond or the extra pi bond for the dienophile. Take everything on the other side, the four carbon piece, and then fill in the, the right alkene uh, pattern for the diene. Okay. Down here, well, I've got that same seven-membered ring, two, two benzenes hanging off of it, the ketone. But now this is part of the diene, so instead of looking what looks like this, Looks like some sort of uh, a spacecraft, perhaps, <laughs> moon lander. Um, and then because I have two carbons and there's already a pi bond, I just add another pi bond and I have uh, acetylene. Uh, in general, actually, uh, this version on the top is, is probably how a molecule like this would be assembled. Even though there looks like there's some angle strain in this alkyne, uh, alkynes like this have actually been synthesized and used uh, in diels alder reactions where the re where your, uh, part of the driving force is the relief of the ring strain. So. This concludes my uh, series of videos on the diels alder reaction. Uh, hopefully by this point you've recognized that this is a powerful reaction to build really complicated molecules pretty quickly. Um, but hidden in that power is a really simple mechanism um, and then a lot of uh, ways that you can control the regiochemistry and stereochemistry. And then if you're given uh, a structure of a product, you should be able to then uh, figure out what the diene and dienophile look like. So you can uh, figure out, you know, I've got this really complicated looking structure, but I know how to put it together using a Diels-Alder reaction. Thank you for watching.